It's a rather overcast day at the start of um, November and we've come to Visical and to look at some pyramids that are here. Now the pyramids have been quite a controversial subject, not only here in Bosnia-Herzegovina but around the world. And I wanted to come today to see for myself and I haven't even gone in the tunnel yet because uh, while I'm standing outside, the person that is responsible for telling the world about this has just arrived. He's got a rather nice leather bomber jacket on and he's got a nice hat on. Um, Doctor, it's been some years since you announced that there was a pyramid here in Visakoy in Bosnia-Herzegovina to the world. Let's go right back to the start. How, how did you find or how did you realize that this pyramid was here uh, in your country of birth? So my name is Dr. Sam Samir Osmanagic and I am anthropology professor. My PhD is on Mayan pyramids. So I've spent uh, years and years in the jungles of Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Belize, Mexico, researching pyramids over there. I've concluded, of course, that more than 90% of the pyramids are covered by soil, vegetation, forests. But then I've expanded my research to pyramids in Peru, Bolivia, China, Mauritius, Canary Islands, Spain, Greece, Italy, Indonesia, Cambodia. These are all countries with pyramids. China, 250 pyramids. Peru, 300 pyramids. Cahokia pyramids in the States, they call them Cahokia mounds. They are also pyramids. So. I realize that everything they teach us about the pyramids is wrong. They are not built only in Egypt and Mexico, but all around the planet. Secondly, the pyramids in Egypt are not tombs for pharaohs, because not a single pyramid has mummy. So, obviously, we had to change something. So, in 21st century, we will need to start with the new science, the pyramid science. So, after 25 years of the pyramid research, in uh, April of 2005, I first came to the Bosnian town of Visoko, which is just 28 kilometers to the northwest of the capital city of Sarajevo. I came to visit the local museum. But then what I saw was this uh, hill, as they called it, towering the town. Uh, but then I was looking at closely. It had four sides, triangular faces, obvious corners, the same slope from bottom to the top. And those four sides meet at apex. So, geometrically speaking, this was a pyramid. I took a compass, and the compass showed me that the sides perfectly match cardinal points, east, west, north, south. And that's exactly how the pyramids are built, geometry and side orientation. All pyramids in China are oriented to the north. All old pyramids in Egypt, north. Most of the Peruvian are north, Cahokia pyramids, north. So, based on those two elements, I immediately knew it was an artificial structure covered by soil and vegetation after thousands of years. Then, the first year, 2005, I uh, started doing some lab analysis, geological core drilling, archaeological trenches as the individual. So by the October of 2005, I had enough material to write the book, which I did, and then I had a big press conference in Sarajevo, and I announced the news that the first Europeans and the biggest pyramids on the planet have been discovered here in the heart of Bosnia. So 12 years after this project has become the most active archaeological site in the world. It's in Bosnia-Herzegovina. It's in a country that is still not too well known, apart from the tragedy of the 1990s. How was the reaction, that initial reaction, when you announced it to the world? Well, when I had that press conference, I, have, uh, I had received at that time... 12,500 emails of support of the common people. But then uh, the reaction of the public here in Bosnia it was polarized. There are people who were against immediately. That was mostly from the cultural establishment, archaeologists, geologists, historians, museum curators. There are people who were curious enough to come and see what we started doing. And a lot of people, especially those who came to the sites, they were very supportive. And this kind of polarized situation uh, remained even today. You have people who never visited the site, who are claiming there is nothing here, everything is natural. And on the other hand, we have had, for example, five international scientific conferences with uh, 120 scientists giving their reports, 
lab analysis, sample testing, radiocarbon dating, energy measurements, proving not only that we have a huge construction complex, but it is an energy complex. It consists of at least five pyramids, which we named the pyramids of the sun, moon, dragon, earth and love, huge network of underground tunnels. We have a tumulus complex also nearby. So somebody in the distant past was able to maneuver with the huge quantities of materials. In the case of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, the pyramid is covered in concrete blocks. Some people call it geopolymer concrete, some people synthetic concrete. That's the case when you don't use cement like we do today as a binder. But besides the construction material, pebbles, rocks, sand, water, they used clay as a binder. And uh, the quality of the concrete is uh, much better than the quality than what we can make today. Our concrete in 21st century have a hardness from 10 megapascals to 60 megapascals. Harder the concrete, better the quality. The concrete on the Bosnian Prim of the Sun, after we tested 50, 50 samples, is in the range from 73 to 134 megapascals two or even three times better quality than what we can make today. The second element of the quality is water absorption, less absorption, better the quality. So what we find out was that uh, our standards are up to 3%, the Sun Pyramid concrete only 1% when it comes to water absorption. So the ancients had formulas how to make excellent quality construction material. The next thing, the Sun, Moon, Dragon Pyramid, when we connect their tops, the distance between the Sun and the Moon Pyramid is 2,180 meters. Moon to Dragon, 2,180. Dragon back to the Sun, 2,180. So it is an equilateral triangle. It's a perfect geometrical shape and as such, part of the sacred geometry. You have sacred geometry, you have moment of the energy. Then we have another triangle within the first one, the top of the Love Pyramid, the top of the Temple of Mother Earth, entrance to the tunnels and the river Fornica. It's another triangle, triangle within a triangle. Again, sacred geometry. Sacred geometry elements are also, let's say, number pi, 3.14, which is incorporated in the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Number phi, or golden section, 1.618. So the ancients were using the elements of sacred geometry to amplify the energies. Now, in the case of the Sun Pyramid in Bosnia, in the last five, six years, we've been using a lot of experts for the energy phenomena. People like physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, scientists. Archaeology, for me, it's not really science. Archaeology is mostly, you know, you compare stuff. Geology, the same thing. But physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, they come with the instruments and they measure. So when we were measuring the top of the Sun Pyramid, uh, team from Croatia, later on team from Serbia, later on team from Finland, later on team from uh, Italy, they have proven that there was an energy beam, frequency of 28 kilohertz, radius of four and a half meters going up. It's focused and it is continuous because we measure it during the summer and the fall and winter and spring. The most interesting measurement was in electrical aspect. Last year, 2016, we sent a drone above the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun with the different instruments, and in electrical aspects, we measure 28 kilohertz frequency of the electrical field. And it goes this way. It goes like four and a half meter wide, and then it expands all the way to 20 meters. 21 meters above the top, it is widest, about 20 meters. Then it gets narrow, then expands, getting narrow, and so on. So, for the physicists, there was no doubt, there were the scalar waves. Some people call them Tesla's waves, some people call them torsion fields. Now, the feature of the scalar waves is that they are much quicker than the speed of light. Of course, in our society, our physics and astronomy is based on Einstein's theory that uh, the speed of light is the biggest speed in the universe. 300,000 kilometers per second, which is big speed, especially f for our planetary purposes. But if you send this speed to our sun, it takes seven and a half minutes to get there. To Northern Star, 600 years. To 
center of our galaxy, Milky Way, 40,000 years, and if you send the light to the center of the universe, 5 billion years. So from the universal standpoint of view, this is very slow uh, speed, because if you want to communicate on such a vast distances, you need something much quicker. And these are the scalar waves, and they travel at the speed which is 100 billion times bigger than the speed of light. And this is what we measured on the top of the Sun Pyramid. And orientation of the scalar waves, it follows the Sun. How do we know that? At the noon time, orientation was to the south, in the afternoon, southwest. That's how our Sun moves, in the morning east, noon south, afternoon southwest, evening west. What does that mean? Is there a connection between our planet and our pyramids with the sun? And then through the sun, using it as the cosmic gate, it at the solar system, it's possible. So now we come to the first potential purpose of pyramids and pyramid energy, communication, but long, long distance communication. The second very important is the pyramid energy is here to protect what is the most precious for us, and that is the human health. We just heard a, I don't know, a colleague of yours, if you know him or you just met him, who's talking about miracle uh, healing that he had. It was a cancer-related. We realized that in the tunnels under the Bosnian Pyramid Valley that uh, we have the combination of at least 10 elements which makes this space perfectly protected. For example, element number one, we have the best electromagnetic field, 28 kilohertz. We have the best ultrasound frequency. It's also 28 kilohertz, and we know that this is the frequency of the levitation. People feel light when they're in the tunnels. Number three, very low frequency of 7.83 hertz, which is in science called the Schumann resonance. Everything resonates in nature. Our planet resonates at 7.83. Actually, it used to be like that until 1990. After that, our technology, computers, laptops, microwaves, TVs, electrical grid, American project, HARP, they've been emitting so much bad electromagnetic fields in the ionosphere, and it's a lot of pressure coming to our planet, and it started uh, resonating higher. 8 hertz, 10 hertz, 12 hertz, 15 hertz. It's a very small difference. But on cellular level, we can feel that difference. We are not in our natural energy field anymore. Now we are standing outside the tunnels. Here is about 12 to 15 hertz. When you go to the tunnels, it's 7.83 hertz. When you go to the top of the sun pyramid, on the sides of the pyramids, 7.83 hertz. Meaning the pyramids keep that best most stable frequency for the planet. They keep it on a stable levels. So, that was the Schumann resonance. The next element we can measure in the tunnels, the concentration of negative ions. The medical science knows that uh, more negative ions, better for us, because they clear the atmosphere from the dust, they raise the level of oxygen in our body, they kill viruses and bacteria. And of course, every disease is associated with the viruses and bacteria. Less viruses, we are healthier. So, more negative ions, better for us. In our homes, very low concentration, 100 per cubic centimeter. We go to the downtowns so of big cities, 400. Villages, 800. By the rivers, 1,500. On the top of the mountains, in the uh, forest, three to 4,000. In the tunnels under the Bosnian pyramids, 20,000, 30,000. 40,000. We have sections with 60,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter, meaning somebody was making an underground healing facility. The next element, underground natural radioactivity. We're not even aware that sometimes we walk on the streets, this radioactivity is coming from an underground, attacking our body, and our body cells are fighting those enemies. In the tunnels, we use uh, Geiger counters. The values are 10 times lower than the minimum allowed. Basically, no radioactivity. The next thing, the cosmic radiations. We are standing and living on the surface of the planet, and we love it, it's romantic, it's sun, it's moon, it's stars, but a lot of cosmic radiations coming our way, some of them are harmful. 
in the tunnels, no harmful cosmic radiations. Now, we have also underground water streams. We know if you sleep above underground water stream, you're going to get sick because it's a negative energy for us after three, five, ten years. People don't know why. They said, oh, I did not drink, you know, I don't smoke, I don't... They get sick because of that negative energy is coming from underground. In the tunnels, and you're going to see that in a few minutes, there is a series of ceramic blocks. They are always above underground water stream. Why? To neutralize negative energy, transforming it to the positive energy. So, we see that so many things were taken into consideration here. And finally, what we bring as a civilization, the mobile phone signals, they are very bad. They operate at 0 0.85 gigahertz. You put your cell phone on your ear, your brain cell starts boiling. No, no mobile phone signal in the tunnels. And finally, Wi-Fi or Internet. Today it operates at 3G in Bosnia, Western Europe 4G, in America soon it will be 5G, 5 gigahertz. This is very bad frequency, this is the frequency of the microwave. So every time we connect on internet, it is like somebody unscrew our head, open the microwave door, put our head inside, close the door, and turn the microwave on. So this is the second potential purpose of pyramid energy, self-healing. The third one. Uh, the pyramid energy improves the molecular structure of the water. <coughs> Excuse me. And we know that because we've been measuring and testing this water that we are finding in the tunnels. The water, using conventional methods, uh, you know, uh, microbiological and chemical analysis, we know there are no viruses and no bacteria. Excellent pH, 7.4, and that's exactly what you want to have, 7.4. This is the pH of our blood. What we drink is about 7. From 7 to 8 is fine. Coke is three. <laughs> it's uh, poison. So, we've done more analysis, uh, more sophisticated analysis. We've done uh, uh, filming of the molecular structure of the water when the water uh, samples were frozen at uh, Dr. Emoto's lab in Japan before he passed away. This water has beautiful hexagonal structure. Why hexagonal? Because it's a perfect geometrical shape and it has a crystal-like structures. It's uh, energetically alive. It's a happy water. You drink it, it vibrates high, you start vibrating high. When you're sick, you vibrate low. So higher vibration helps you, you know, to relieve the problems. The next thing, <laughs> the food. It improves the molecular structure of food. The next thing, your immunity, it goes up. The next thing, your aura, auric field, bioenergy field around the body, it gets improved also. The next thing... We, I have to tell you that <laughs> there's a dog taking a very, very great interest in, in the interview. Please continue. <laughs> the next thing is uh, our spiritual senses. We live in a society where we, we've become 100% uh, materialistic beings, relying only on physical senses. True, it, yes, we have five physical senses, but also we have 30, 30, 30 spiritual senses. Today in society they talk about one spiritual sense, the sixth sense. Actually, we have 30 of them. We are capable of feeling the energies. We are capable of seeing other people's auric fields, colors of the aura, we are capable of uh, communicate directly through the telepathy, telekinesis, moving the objects with the power of our mind, moving through very strong energy fields, teleportation, and changing space and time and densities. So what we've noticed is that once people visit the tunnels or more times, they can start feeling stuff with their hands instead of you know seeing or touching physical senses feeling which is the first step for the spiritual senses so we can see that really the pyramid energy can affect only every aspect of our life so what we do here in bosnia these are the pioneering research globally our colleagues in egypt egyptologists after 200 years, they still don't know who built the pyramids at Giza, when, how, and why. The bedtime stories that these were built as tombs for pharaohs without a single proof, you know, they cannot last forever. 
50 years from now, people will be laughing at us what we believed. The same thing in China or Peru or Mexico. Why? Because archaeologists jealously guard those projects for themselves. They cannot understand the pyramid energies without engineers, physicists, geophysicists, without spiritual scientists, without so many other scientific disciplines being involved. So we have to have an interdisciplinary scientific approach. That was your first question. <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to say, actually, is, you know, all the, all the data, all the description that you've got is tremendously uh, information uh, intense and like a layman like a, a normal person like me it's a tremendous amount um to take in how difficult has it been for you to articulate this to i mean you've been talking to me but people that might not be as intellectually aware uh, as i am how, how difficult is it for you to do that well, this is a scientific project. We started first as archaeological, interdisciplinary scientific, then energy aspect, then spiritual aspect, then healing aspect, and so many aspects. So it doesn't matter if people have a certain educational level or not, but, you know, they can see some stuff, some stuff they can understand, some stuff, even if they cannot understand, they can experience. For example, we have a couple here from Visoko. We have a lady, she's in, in her 70s, she could not even walk, then, or she was having this uh, uh, stick helping her to walk. But after several visits to tunnels, she didn't need stick no more. So if we talk to her, maybe she cannot uh, explain what was happening to her. But yes, if you ask if the pyramids exist, of course they do, because the pyramids did help her. And we have many cases like that. So people more and more realize that uh, the pyramids are not about going like in front of Egyptian pyramid, take a photo and ride the camels. The pyramids are actually about the experiencing what the ancient builders were capable of. How did they maneuver with so much material? How did they know about the elements of sacred geometry? How did they put all this stuff together, getting very specific frequencies that can affect us? water, food, communication. So, of course, some people can understand certain levels, some people can understand more, some people don't want to understand, some people are simply jealous or lack of knowledge or everything changes, the history book changes. It doesn't matter. What we do, we do everything in a proper way, using proper methodology, but we are open-minded and this has become, on one hand, the most open project in the world because there are no secrets. On the other hand, we do value every input we get. I remember when our archaeological manager came uh, for the first year and he was doing everything right per book, documentation, archaeological trenches and stuff like that. Three years after he approached me, he said, hey, did you know that the stones are alive? <laughs> I was looking at him, I said, Tim, three years ago you would never say that. But being exposed to these pyramid energies, he realized that everything is in kind of alive. Everything vibrates. And really, the water vibrates, the pyramids vibrate, our planet vibrates. We as humans, plants, animals, including stone. So, you know, we have a different approach to this project. All other projects are fear-based. If they find something that does not fit, they're not supposed to say that. Otherwise, they're going to lose their job. They lose their job, they lose their houses and homes and cars and wives and so, fear-based. Academia, this is how it functions. Science, corporate world, media world, you know, politics, religion, organism. But in our case, it's different. Everybody who comes here, they can talk to our researchers, to our volunteers, to our you know, employees, to other people who come and visit. Here we don't try to convince anything to anyone. We simply show them the arguments, data. It's up to them what they're going to conclude. I'm about to go into the tunnel, so I'm going to experience something. I'm, I'm quite prepared for that. But finally, when you started this project, like any other human being, you had, you had an idea um, and most probably a mid-term and a long-term aim. We're here years after you started. Has that 
aim changed at all for you? Well, when I started, I knew that uh, the biggest pyramid on the planet was in front of me. And then I received a call from a dervish. Dervish is an order in Islam. And he told me, listen, this is much more than a pyramid. It was a very short phone conversation. And I met the guy. Then I was thinking, wow, it, is, it was the year 2006. CNN was there, BBC was there, CBS, all these big guys were there. A lot of you know people coming, tens of thousands. I was on the top of the world, the biggest pyramid, the first in Europe. The oldest pyramids. I was thinking, I mean, what does he mean it's more than a pyramid? Today I realized, yes, he was right. This is more than a, this is a, a huge energy complex that changes not only our, uh, you know, history books. It has ability to change our presence because what we have today, everything is wrong. When you take the energy, the concept of the energy, the coal, coal industry, of course, the dirt industry, oil and gas, limited sources. It costs a lot of money. So when just it comes to the energy, you see the ancients, they were able to locate the pyramids above underground energy potent places. We have iron, which generates electromagnetic fields. We have underground waters that generate negative ions. We have two parallel underground water streams, we have electricity, we have organ energy, we have ultrasound, we have so many different energy phenomena. And the pyramid has the ability to amplify the energies. The tunnels amplify the energy. The quartz crystal amplifies the energy. Elements of circuit geometry amplify the energy. So the ancients were so smart. They were making energy complex that lasts forever. We're talking here 30,000 years. So, so much we can learn for them only if it is energy concept. You know what would it mean that you have a free energy? You would change society totally, for better. That's one aspect. The other aspect, what we have here, we introduced the free flow of knowledge. People share information and knowledge. Not like so many other archaeological and scientific projects. And based on those two pillars, free energy, free uh, flow of knowledge, we could build free society. So this is much more than just another archaeological project. And that's how we started, the archaeological project. It's so much more. So yes, it has changed totally my objectives from you know, 12 years ago than what we have today.